Hello and welcome to another episode of Bad Decision Works. My name is Johan. In this episode, I'm going to update you guys about the roll cage build. Yeah, so the project's almost done. Uh, almost ready for the first track day of this year. In the last episode, you saw me build the roll cage, paint it. As you can see, it's still nice and gold. But also, I painted the interior since then. Yeah, so there is a few things I need to button up and uh, then the car will be ready for this season. I'm gonna walk around the car now and show you guys what's up and what needs to be done and also what has changed in the past few weeks since I made my last episode. I keep saying project roll cage, but in effect this is just the winter overhaul of this car. The main project is still the roll cage obviously, but also the new wheels that I found a while ago when I updated you guys about in the previous episode. Uh, they, are, they also need a little bit of work to get fitted to the car because uh, they are a different ball pattern than the Corvette wheels I had before. So these, these are Japanese wall wheels, the uh, Volk Racing. Uh, 5 by 114.3 instead of 5 by 108. Point... No, 108 <laughs> that uh, Volvo originally has. So we needed a little bit of spacers. I uh, got some really cool spacers like delivered within a few days from uh, Spacer.sa. It's a brilliant uh, manufacturer of spacers and um, used to be my, uh, my supplier when I still had bad decisions as a, uh, as a shop. Um, anyway, so I needed to do some work. Uh, the big upside of this is that the uh, the offset of the car is now way better. So the, the handling should improve a lot since the Corvette wheels were more stance uh, oriented and had a little bit of uh, uh, bad ET values. And also I had a like 45 mil spacer. This is only a 16 mil spacer that's on this uh, setup now, which only deviates I think I, I'll calculate it's like four or five mil from the original offset that the, the, the wheels need to have. The back is way worse, but that's not a steering axle, so that doesn't really matter. The only downside is that with big spacers, the, the wheel bearings might uh, have a little bit less lifespan in them, which it's a fucking race car, so I don't, I don't care. Um, so yeah, 60 mil spacer, but to get the proper width of the car, because without uh, changes the, the the wheel would be way too far inside and I yeah I want to albeit for just for the looks I want to have it a little bit wider than original so I spaced the um, support arms also and I'll show you right now welcome inside the suspension of my car uh, so normally this part the control arm bolts directly to the ball joint what I did is I put in a, a 50 millimeter uh, about two inch uh, spacer here to space out the strut so, so 50 mil increase uh, this is a spacer that I developed for as a part of lift kits I've been selling them for a few years and they've been proven I've had them on the on the lifted Volvo for many years and uh, this works fine uh, the only downside is that uh, if you don't move the top then uh, the camber will increase uh, or decrease I should say uh, but will be like 10 degrees or whatever. It's a ridiculous stand, so that, that doesn't work and it's not good for anything. Um, so I moved the uh, uh, the top mounts also out to outwards as much as possible. And now the camber is, I think I measured like 1.9 degrees or whatever, which is kind of like probably ideal for the, for the thing that I'm using it for. So yeah, this is what I did to uh, move the suspension. And you can see the camber is not that bad. As I said, it's about Two degrees. It's probably hard to see on camera, but I also moved the fender out to have a little bit more clearance here. wasn't enough, so it, uh, the, uh, the fender flat chipped a little bit, but this is still a temporary solution. Until I got enough money for a 3D scanner and design new fenders, this is what this is. So this side I didn't do. I need to move the defender out a little bit still. And uh, yeah, I uh, drove for, like 400, 500 meters yesterday and already took off like <laughs> a big chunk of the fender flare so I, uh, I definitely should uh, massage this a little bit and, and use the heat gun and also uh, change the, um, uh, the mounting points to keep the bumper like this so out a little bit more for a little bit more clearance and a little bit more steerability which is kind of nice to have on a car like this Ugh, mud 
in the rear I also had to make some changes uh, to fit everything. Uh, on top here, the fender flare is more than wide enough, but in the bottom it wasn't. It was like it wasn't like rubbing was a very big understatement. But so I kind of I made a bracket inside here that like folds the uh, the fender flare out a little bit more, and also I used the heat gun to uh, uh, also use the heat gun to massage this a little bit and then give a little bit more clearance here and and like fold out. So this side's not rubbing anymore. I have to do the other side a little bit better. I've been doing it, but it's not very nice. And also this is where the uh, the fender flare used to run over here. And uh, yeah, obviously I need to like make this smooth and cut some small pieces of uh, film to, to cover this uh, nasty part. As you know, the car is red, it's not the original color, which is red. So apart from the wheels, the interior paint is the big thing that changed since last video. Um, I painted the interior with uh, Batliner paint, which is a two-part two epoxy paint, which is super durable. And I'm already very happy with it since I've been abusing <laughs> the interior already with so and it's it's not scratching at all. It looks nice and even. It has a uh, not very matte but also not shiny kind of like a satin matte-ish uh, finish to it, which looks really nice. And everything now looks very nice and uniform uh, in comparison to what it used to be before because there was like this bitumen stuff all over the place and this sound deadening which left some like unpainted parts and there were scratches and weld marks and everything so I'm super happy with the interior there was only one thing I have to do uh, which is a little bit of a shame since it uh, will kind of ruin a part of the paint job but I also have to redo the back part of the, the car as soon as the fuel system is out sometime in the future uh, when I mix up the paint for that, I will also kind of fix up the, the, the small fix I have to do. I'll show you right now what that is. I can't get close to my... Uh, so I just used the finger to point, but I'm not happy with the way the seat is mounted. It's, uh, it's now on rails. Actually, the original 240 rails I, I reused uh, into this setup and I really don't like it. It's uh, it's a little bit wonky. It doesn't really show on on video, but at least like the fact that I can move the seat is is not good. So I'm going to remove the rails and also uh, weld in a pipe uh, instead of using the original 240 mounts, which are flexible to say the least. So that's going to be fixed soon. The front mounts are the front mounts are fine, by the way, but the rear mounts that's the the issue. So uh, cutting, grinding, and welding again. Here you can see another issue. Uh, it's kind of hard to see probably through the glare of the window, but it was really hard, uh, kind of undoable to paint this side of the roll cage. All same on the A pillars. So uh, yeah, that's probably going to be some little bit of brush painting later. Another issue that I had was that I was removing stickers from the car and also from the windows. As you know, before this window was, there was this like red stripe and a six and all kinds of brands and donut and grind art and whatever. Uh, I removed them and then I wanted to remove all the glue residue. Uh, and I was like, mm, I don't know if thinner and polycarbonate goes, go together properly. So I uh, took a pet test piece, like a leftover from when I cut this window because it was a rectangle when I got it. I uh, got a rust leftover piece, I put some thinner on it, waited a minute, nothing happened. I uh, wiped it away with a dry piece of uh, paper cloth and no problem. So then I walked to the car, put some stuff, uh, put some thinner on it and immediately it went white and cloudy. And I was like, oh sh shit. So now I applied some heat with the heat gun again. It's a lifesaver tool. Um, applied some heat, got a little bit of the whiteness away, but it's super scratched up and it's like still cloudy and it looks like shit and it deformed with the heat. Um, so the only window apart from the from the windscreen, the only window left that's not that's still glass is the rear window. Uh, and in two weeks, I'm going to Holland um, and buy a piece of polycarbonate for the rear window, since it's a lot cheaper in Holland as in than compared to Sweden. So I'm also going to buy a new piece for this. 
copy this form onto the, the new piece and then have a new window, which is nice. Uh, but also sad. It's it's luckily it's only like 40, 45 euros for a piece of polycarbonate this size, uncut. Uh, so it's not that bad, but it's still feels bad to destroy something that's not even a year old. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, yeah, that's life. Just, that just goes with car building. Well, not per se car building, but more with me. And why am I removing all these stickers from the car? Well, not all of them, the Michel Vaillant livery stays. But like these, these on the side, they will probably be gone. And the reason for that is that I thought each sticker would add five horsepowers. Uh, the internet promised that it adds five horsepowers per sticker. I feel a little bit cheated now, but well, so they have to go. This is actually quite nice. Uh, last but not least, I've been talking to a few people on Instagram uh, after one of my stories about bigger brakes. And as you can see, this is a brand new brake disc that's mounted in a mill and waiting for some milling action. Um, I did one already, mounted it on the car, added a spacer that I bought from Facebook, uh, from a guy on Facebook, I don't know. Um, and that should just move, move the original caliper out, outwards a little bit. Well, a little bit, quite much, since it's 263 mil on the original brake disc. And this is 320 mil, which is an increase of over 50 mil. Um, the opinions vary a little bit of about if that's going to happen, but at least the car will look a little bit nicer with some bigger brakes. Uh, the original calipers, in my opinion, are more than enough, but having a little bit of a bigger leverage uh, will never hurt. And it looks nice. So I'm going to update the uh, brakes also. I really did wanted to show this in this video, but sadly, as you can see, this brake disc is still in the in the mill, and uh, yeah, it didn't happen. Um, and to explain why, we have to walk to the car again. Yes, let's let me explain a little bit about brakes. Uh, no, not about brakes. Uh, you, everybody knows how brakes work, and if you don't, uh, okay. This is a spacer that goes between the brake caliper and the original hub. And it moves the uh, the caliper out by a given distance, which is half of the increase of in the diameter. Blah blah blah. So it moves that out. Then you can put on bigger discs. You can see increased diameter. Looks good. Everybody happy. So what you want to have with brakes is that the brake pads engage the brake disc. This is the, the rusty thing in the middle here, as much as possible. So what happens if you move the uh, the caliper out? and put in a bigger big disc, the radius of this disc changes. And this caliper has been designed for this 263 mil radius. I'll put a little bit of a um, illustration here in the screen now, so you can see what I mean instead of just fingers pointing at things. Uh, but if the, if the diameter of the brake disc increases and the brake caliper does not change, then uh, the brake pads will not contact the brake disc fully uh, or and or the brake the new brake discs will run into the the sides of the calipers because the radius is not correct so uh, normally people just remove a little bit of the brake disc to decrease the diameter and just go with less bad contact but that's actually the thing that actually makes the braking work is the contact patch between the brake pads and a disc. It's not the size of the discs or the, the amount of pistons that you have, it's the amount of the, the size of the pads pressing on the, on the disc. So to do this properly, I'll have to take off the original caliper machine away a little bit without losing too much of rigidity because then it's going to flex and does not work again. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit bigger project than just installing a spacer and uh, machining the discs to fit this car. Yes, so an outro. Um, what should I say in the outro? I don't know, actually. Uh, few fox ups as it goes. I, don't, I think most uh, YouTubers don't show their fuck ups. I just do. I'm just going to replace the window and don't say anything happened. I'm also just going to admit that I, uh, I underestimated the, the um, strength of the original seat mounts. Um, so. 
But I'm happy, spring's coming, car's almost done. And that means that I can finally start working on the shore oven. Not sure yet how much I will do this uh, this summer, uh, as much as possible, hopefully. But there are also more things in my life that I need to do. And I'm also, again, rambling. Um, so next time, uh, hopefully you will see me finalizing the, uh, the wiring. I've made some nice switch panel thingies with like little cool switches to like toggle on and off headlights and everything. So the wiring will be my main focus uh, for the upcoming future. Obviously finishing the this, like the stance thing, like the suspension and not rubbing and not destroying my fenders. Um, yeah, and, and installing a door would also be nice, but that's just paint is drying inside in the, with the heating elements, so that's fine. Uh, applying some uh, protective tape to the wall cage as soon as the temperature is high enough or I turn on the, uh, the heating again. Uh, yeah, bear with me, will be cool. Hopefully. Mm. Hey dog. Why am I doing this? There's no reason. No. Blah, 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 blah. We guys met uh, in YouTube world. I don't watch it, nigga. It's a big ching thing. Ching 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 Jesus, how hard can it be? Get to the chopper. Ha, I've got a chichi.